Some say, well, we have to deal with our border first. The Ukrainian-Russian border is our border. It's the border between depraved autocracy and freedom-loving people seeking our democratic way of life. Do we have a stake in that outcome? Yes. Undeniably yes. Will we rise to the occasion? Will we stand shoulder to shoulder with our Ukrainian brothers and sisters who for 1,151 days have been holding off the depraved, thuggish dictator Vladimir Putin who has respected no norms of warfare. He's targeted children in hospitals and schools. He's bombed, he's, he's bombed apartment blocks, killing thousands. I join Mr. Uh, Turner and others in saluting the speaker, as well as our leader, Mr. Jeffries, for making this important legislation possible. I associate myself with everything that's been said already about Ukraine, but I want to just focus on one particular area. I hope that our colleagues will choose democracy and decency rather than autocracy and evil, because I fear that if you choose the Putin route, you will have blood on your hands blood of the children, blood of their mothers, raped in front of their parents, raped in front of their children. I urge an I vote on this and all the other bills before us today. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The gentlewoman's time has expired. All right, guys, so new speakers, same old Uniparty, because the Uniparty ultimately always gets their way. They always get their way. Now, this is something that was inevitably going to happen, and I hate to tell you guys, I hate to inform you that, yes, the House has passed a $95 billion foreign aid package to send our taxpayer money overseas to defend Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, okay, along with a bunch of other stuff that they pass as well, too. They are essentially defending everybody else's border except our border, because our border got absolutely no attention whatsoever in this bill, even though uh, our border is currently being invaded, okay? America is being invaded by cartels and criminals, and they're already causing problems, okay? We're already seeing Americans lose their lives due to what is happening at the border. But again, what is the Republicans focused on? What is the Democrats focused on in Congress? Again, they're focused on protecting somebody else's borders. Now, like I told you guys, this inevitably was going to happen and I knew it was gonna happen. When I saw how the Republicans, including Mike Johnson, completely botched the PR campaign and the negotiation with Democrats when it came to uh, the border and foreign spending, okay? Because initially what Mike Johnson said was that, hey, we don't really want to send money overseas, okay? We don't want to continue to do that. But if we do that, then we're going to do it only if we secure the border. We have to secure the border in order to do that. Now, in a sane world where we have a strong Republican Party, uh, they would say anything less than HB2, okay, uh, which is the Secure the Border Act, we can't accept. If Democrats don't want to do that, if they don't actually want to accept our legislation for securing the border, then we're not going to accept their legislation for funding foreign wars, okay? And the reason why this did not work is because Republicans are not in lockstep with securing the border. In fact, there are probably more Republicans that are on board with securing other people's borders than our border, right? They make Israel's borders and Ukraine's border a priority. And because of that, you now have probably what? Three fourths of Congress. So all the Democrats plus at least half of the Republican Party that is on board with securing other people's borders and maybe one fourth of uh, Congress that is on board with securing our border. When that's the case, when that's what the numbers looks like, again, you get situations where the compromise seems like that, well, 
you should get on board with this bipartisan border deal that doesn't actually really secure the border uh, along with the foreign aid. And that makes it look like both parties are actually getting what they want. When we know that the conservative base, the conservative voters do not want that, right? That's not a compromise for us, okay? The real compromise actually should have been uh, foreign aid plus the Secure the Border Act. However, again, we didn't get that because the Republicans in Congress, at least half of them, don't actually really represent their voters. They actually represent the military industrial complex that wants to keep the war machine going and big corporations that don't want to secure the border. So this is how we've gotten to this situation where essentially we're just sending money overseas and we're not securing the border at all because it would have took a speaker with cojones of steel to actually stand his ground on this issue despite the opposition and say no 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 i'm simply not going to send money overseas unless we pass our border legislation that is the only compromise i will accept and you can do whatever you got to do but i'm not gonna budge okay it would have took a strong speaker in order to do that unfortunately mike johnson has proven multiple times that that's not him. Evil is an independent force that exists outside of people, that acts upon people. I really believe that. I've experienced it I've, a lot. And it's obvious. And what vessel do they choose? The weak. It's weak men and women who are instruments of evil. The weaker the leader, the more evil that leader will be. So it's, and unfortunately, we've reached a time in American history where Every leader is either a woman or a weak man, pretty much. And so there's, I'm sorry to say it, that's just true. And the weaker the leader, that's why Mike Johnson, everyone's like, oh, Mike Johnson's such a nice guy. Well, I know Mike Johnson and he's a perfectly nice guy to the extent that he's like polite and seems kind of meek and restrained and he's not saying motherfucker every, ever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He's got like very sort of buttoned down affect, um, but he's, he's a weak man. And that's the man you should be afraid of. The people who you shouldn't be less afraid of are the, you know, headstrong, loud, don't care what anybody thinks. Yeah, those guys will go off track, but they're probably not going to abet, you know, genocide or blow up the world in a nuclear exchange because they might, they may be obnoxious, but they know who they are. Weak people just become a host for evil, you know, a, an, an open empty building that evil occupies, possesses even. Um, and that's exactly what's happening to Mike Johnson. It's like absolutely crazy what Mike Johnson is doing. And But it's not because he's evil, it's because he's weak and therefore susceptible to evil. It's a meaningful distinction that I have noticed. Yeah, so I think that Tucker is correct. I think he makes some good points there about Mike Johnson because while I respect Mike Johnson as a Christian man, um, and I really do admire his social values. Uh, he has shown that he is a weak leader. Okay. And I hope that he would be better. However, he was thrust into this position, uh, after ousting Kevin McCarthy, which I still think was the right thing to do. Um, I think that you're going to get this outcome regardless of who was speaker. Um, and I think I said that at the time that I'm not sure exactly how much can actually change. Um, but again, the pressure was put on Mike Johnson uh, after he started working with Democrats uh, to continue to fund the government. Um, and now when you have this intel coming out saying that, well, Ukraine is on the verge of collapse. OK, if we don't continue to fund them, that, you know, the Russians are going to take over. He folded to that propaganda because they've been saying that for months. Right. And Ukraine hasn't fallen yet. But they say, hey, it's about to happen. We got to get them the money. And I think it'll be interesting to see how Democrats react. OK, I, I guarantee you it's going to be Pikachu face surprise. Right. When we send all this money to Ukraine and then, you know, lo and behold, hey, uh, the inevitable happened, right, when it comes to the situation between uh, Russia and Ukraine and then all of our 60 plus billion dollars that we just sent goes up and smoked along with the hundreds of billions that we've already sent to Ukraine, which, you know, probably definitely is going to happen, okay? It's going to be a huge waste of money, but yet these people are in Congress uh, with these treasonous chants talking about Ukraine, 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 support another country and their borders before our borders. That along with the Israel situation in which we have Israel <laughs> basically about to go to war with Iran. Um, we all know that everybody in Congress wants to give money to Israel. Okay. There are very few members of Congress, no matter how much they claim they're America first, 
uh, that are going to say no to Israel. So basically you have three fourths of Congress that wants to give money to Ukraine. And then you have all of Congress that wants to give money to Israel. It was going to happen, right? It, it was definitely going to happen. And I think with this situation with Israel and Iran, I think that that was the straw that broke the camel's back in the sense that Mike Johnson is strongly pro-Israel for various reasons. So it is my guess that he probably wanted to fund Israel. He definitely wants to send money to Israel right now. Okay. Like all of Congress does. The only question was whether or not we were going to get the border, okay? And clearly and obviously, we didn't get the border. We did not get the Secure the Border Act uh, because Republicans effed up the negotiations from the beginning, okay? They should have stuck to their guns of no foreign aid unless we get our Secure the Border Act, and that's it, right? Anything less than that, we're just not going to do it. And they should have made that the compromise, and that should have always been the compromise. But again, Mike Johnson screwed that up. Um, the establishment Republicans screwed that up by negotiating with Democrats to come up with a bipartisan deal. And that moved the goalpost to now. It makes it look like that the compromise is some bill that actually really doesn't secure the border along with foreign aid. And then you had some of the silly Republicans coming out here talking about, we don't need a bill. We don't need a bill to secure the border, <laughs> right? Biden can just do it with executive orders. Again, really dumb thing to come out and say. Um, and you know, it, it, they just messed it up, right? It's just, a disaster right it really is and um there's a reason why i don't really talk about this that much is because there's not really good things coming out of congress right now from republicans it is dysfunctional it is a mess okay and this is a part of it this is what we get which is democrats get everything they want and the conservative voters get nothing right when we have the majority in the house it, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. But this is par for the course when it comes to Republicans being weak. So I'm not surprised. But I want to go ahead and, and play this news clip so you guys get a better understanding of what's actually in this bill and what's going on in Congress. So let's get right into it with senior congressional correspondent Chad Pergram. He's joining us live on Capitol Hill. Chad, what's going on? Hey, Bill. Well, here's what's going on uh, over the past couple of minutes here. Very busy minute. Right now, uh, they are passing the bill to aid Israel. This is the final vote in the series. Just a few minutes ago, they approved uh, $61 billion to Ukraine. You had a lot of Democrats who were supporters waving Ukrainian flags on the House floor. That's actually against decorum. Uh, they were admonished by Mark Molinaro, who is a Republican. And it's also treasonous, right? It's treasonous as well, too. I mean, imagine we live in a country where you have a political party celebrating defending another country's borders over our borders and they're waving their flag in our capitol building right again this is insanity absolute insanity okay uh the democrats <laughs> basically are a party of traitors right they are a treasonous party at this point okay now, again, for as much as I can rag on Democrats for being treasonous, I knew they was treasonous for the longest time, right? So this is why I'm so upset with Republicans, right? I only can really go off on Republicans because it's like we should not even be in this situation, okay? There's no reason why we should be in this situation that we're in right now unless we have a bill to secure the border, right? There's zero excuses for this, zero excuses. You have a majority in the House, but again, it tells you everything you need to know, guys, about how the Republican Party does not actually really want to secure the border. They don't care about securing the border as much as they care about securing other people's borders. And this is something that conservative voters need to actually start holding Republicans accountable for, because all they do is virtue signal. They go to the border and they, you know, say, oh, Biden needs to secure it. They do these hearings where they go off on alejandro mariarchus oh they do the impeachment thing that's all a show at the end of the day this right here tells you everything you need to know about the republicans and their willingness to secure the border the fact that they let foreign aid money go to secure somebody else's borders before ours and they didn't fight tooth and nail to stop it as a party tells you everything you need to know about this party and how these individuals they need to be voted out they have to be held accountable okay because this is not the party of America first right now. It's not. This is still the neocon party based off this vote right here. From New York, who was presiding. But right now, there are more than, you know, 366 votes getting close to, uh, you know, I mean, there's not that many nays on the board here, 58 nays. But, but look at how 
uh, there are a lot more Republican yeas for this bill than Democratic nays. I was told, Democratic yeas, I was told uh, just about 45 minutes ago or an hour or so ago that they would expect about 40 Democrats to vote no on this, and so 37 is the key. Now, so what this means is that the, the House of Representatives has passed the overall aid package. It has four parts to it. A curbing of TikTok in the United States, aid to Taiwan, aid to Ukraine, and aid to uh, Israel. Okay, so they wrap that all together and they send it to the House of Representatives. Now, here's the $64,000 question. At the end of this roll call vote, does Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Republican representative from Georgia, offer her resolution to try to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson? Uh, that's a problem. If they do that, uh, then there's going to be just absolute mayhem here in the House of Representatives, considering what the House went through last fall when there was the removal of Kevin McCarthy. Now, to be clear, we've been told in the past few minutes that uh, senior members of the House Republican leadership do not think that Green is going to offer that resolution. But if she's going to do it, she'll probably do it at the end of this vote series, because this is the end of voting for the day in the House of Representatives. Moreover, we were told that, uh, you know, she said this some weeks ago, and we should listen right now. This is Mark Molinar announcing the vote total. We should probably listen to the floor to see what the vote total is and if Green uh, introduces her resolution. Pursuant to House Resolution 1160, the Senate Amendment to H.R. 815 is considered as agreed to with the amendment described in Section 6 of House Resolution 1160. Chair lays before the House a communication. The Speaker's Rooms, Washington, D.C., April 20th, 2024. I hereby designate the period from Saturday, April 20th, 2024. So this is Susan Cole, the House Reading Sunday, Clerk. Uh, so far, Marjorie Taylor Greene has not introduced her resolution, but we'll kind of keep an eye on that because sometime in the next five or so minutes, we're in that zone where she might do it if she were to do it. And, and this is what would happen is, is if she were to offer it, you would have this presented from the day as someone like Susan Cole, the, the reading clerk there, would, would read it. It would, in essence, be live. And one of two options were then on the table. They would have to consider it right away, or the House is now done for the week. There's supposed to be a recess now until next week. Uh, the House would have to consider this when they came back next week. But so far, no indication from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But, but a couple of weeks ago, Green indicated that if Mike Johnson put a Ukraine bill on the floor, she would move to vacate the chair, an MTV, as it's called, motion to vacate the chair. In other words, to say that there is nobody in the speaker's chair and you're calling for a new election. If this were a parliamentary system, this would be very similar to a vote of no confidence in the prime minister if we were in the United Kingdom or, or someplace in Europe. Uh, so that doesn't happen very often. That's exactly what happened with Kevin McCarthy, the former Speaker of the House last fall. And the first thing that would happen if they did consider it today is you would have a motion to table, an effort to try to get that out of there, to kill it, to dump it. And what happened last fall is you didn't have any Democrats who were willing to vote uh, to help Kevin McCarthy. But you have a completely different scenario right now because uh, Democrats argued they pushed for aid to Ukraine. What did they just pass about 10 minutes ago? aid to Ukraine. And so it is thought if Marjorie Taylor Greene were to try to remove the Speaker of the House that Democrats might intervene and protect Mike Johnson. Uh, they don't like some of Mike Johnson's policies. They don't like his conservatism. They don't like his alignment with former President Trump. But they do like the fact that they believe he's been much more honest uh, than Kevin McCarthy. He hasn't made, you know, deals that, uh, you know, with different sides that, that aren't uh, congruous with one another. Uh, they also think uh, that, uh, you know, he did the, quote, right thing. He passed uh, uh, bills, multiple bills to fund the government, multiple bills to avoid short-term government shutdowns. And now he's advanced this foreign aid package, uh, Israel, Taiwan, um, also Ukraine, which was a big one for many of the Democrats. So that is significant. So they might be willing, and that would be a rather extraordinary scene, if they were to step in and intervene to protect House Speaker Mike Johnson. Yeah, so a.k.a. They think he's weak, right? In a nutshell, they think he's weak. So, I mean, look, here's the thing. Um, will Marjorie Taylor Greene actually try to oust uh, Mike Johnson? Well, it remains to be seen. This is what she said after uh, this vote to fund foreign wars while not 
Securing our border. Take a look. Go down. We saw your, all your frustration Hello, man. with Mike Johnson. So is today the day you're going to call for the vote seeking his ouster? I'm actually going to let my colleagues go home and hear from their constituents because I think people have been too obsessed uh, with, with voting for foreign wars and the murder industry uh, here in America to actually understand how angry Americans are. Um, when you have the strongest, loudest voices uh, in, Republican, in the Republican movement and grassroots, furious calling for Mike Johnson to be vacated. Uh, the people here, my, my colleagues, have not heard the message. So I'm looking forward th for them to go home on uh, hearing, hearing from the folks back at home. But this is the sellout of America today. When we had members of Congress in there waving the Ukrainian flag on the United States House of Representatives floor, um, while we're doing nothing to secure our border, I think every American in this country sh should be furious. It, it's, who's going to vote for these people? How, how can you vote for these people? They don't serve our country. Are you promising to serve? call a vote on a motion to vacate eventually? I, I just I don't think you were listening very well. No, you said you wait for your constituents, but will you ever call it for a vote? But, I mean, given what you said, do Republicans deserve to be in the majority? That's up to the people, because this is the third betrayal by Mike Johnson. He, he delivered a two-part omnibus, funded the Department of Justice, 91 federal indictments against President Trump, funded the FBI that raided Mar-a-Lago, gave him a brand new FBI building, funded Joe Biden's open border policies that are kill, killing Americans every single day. Then he, then he reauthorized FISA that spied on American citizens, spied on President Trump's campaign, and he voted against the warrant requirement, the same warrant requirement that he was for six months ago. And then he did this bullshit in here on the House floor, foreign war package that does nothing for America. I, it, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm thankful that the America gets to see who this man is. I'm thankful that America gets to see who the people that voted for this is, uh, because this is the only way it's going to change. People why, have to see the truth. Why is this fight against Russia not worth it? Based on, based on what you just said, based on Russia Russia what you just it. said, are you waiting to see if there will be more support in your conference before calling a motion to vacate? There, there is more support. It's growing. I've said from the beginning, I'm going to be responsible with this. I support my majority. I support the majority next time. I do not support Mike Johnson. He's already a lame duck. If we have the vote today in our conference, he would not be speaker today. He's what? already a lame duck. He can't raise money. Everyone knows it. We know we can't win the majority next year without raising money. He can't be speaker. He doesn't have the vote. This is the process that just has to happen. Yeah, so Mark Taylor Green said some interesting things there, particularly when it comes to raising money because that's essentially what leadership in congress is about why are these people leaders is because they can raise money now i found it fascinating when they selected mike johnson to be the leader or the speaker uh even though he's really bad at raising money right so that's probably an issue okay uh and that's going to affect republicans and their chance of expanding the majority in the house uh it doesn't really look good for republicans right now uh i think situations like this definitely makes the gop look incompetent uh, they look inconsistent. And, um, you know, I think that with Mike Johnson uh, being removed as speaker or, you know, that chair being vacated, I think that that's going to cause more chaos. And I think it could potentially lead to Hakeem Jeffries taking that seat. OK, I think that that's the one thing that Marjorie Taylor Greene should strongly and heavily consider. Uh, before doing this. And I'm not saying either way. I really don't know at this point what they should do, because I think personally, you know, I mean, the only thing Mike Johnson really did was just uh, delayed and inevitable, right? But he ended up doing exactly what Kevin McCarthy would have did, which, you know, it's funny because <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene supports Kevin McCarthy. That's her guy, okay? I got some questions about their relationship. But, um, you know, I, I don't think that Kevin McCarthy would have did anything different. I think that it, it probably would have been the same old thing. I think the ultimate takeaway here for the conservative base is that we have to start holding Republicans accountable. OK, the Republicans that don't want to secure the border, the Republicans that choose to sell out the country, they have to be primary and elected out. That's the solution. That's the solution. Otherwise, you're going to continue to get the same thing. Half the Republican Party guys, at the very least, cares more about other countries' borders than our borders. So, again, you know, Mike Johnson was stuck between a rock and a hard place in the sense that he was up against three fourths of the House. Right. And ultimately, he was going to lose that battle. It was just about. Was he willing to go nuclear with it, right? Was he willing to take it all the way? And as we've seen, uh, Kevin McCarthy, not willing to take it all the way. 
okay and mike johnson not willing to take it all the way which is a sign of weak leadership because strong leaders understand their leverage and they say hey you know what i'm willing to take it all the way that's how strongly i feel about securing the border we have to and if we don't get aid to ukraine and israel hey let the chips fall where they may if that would have been his position he would have got something on the border Somebody would have folded, right? Somebody would have folded. I think Democrats would have folded, but unfortunately, he didn't do that. And um, this is currently the situation that we're in. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.